Hello YouTube, I am Dr. Zombie, and this is my first ever YouTube video. In general, I'm going to talk about atheism, whiskey, politics, disability issues, and anything else I can think of. Today, I am going to talk about my name and a bit of an origin story, some common disability annoyances, and a brief tirade on how it is not a miracle. So why Dr. Zombie? Well, it's fairly simple. I am a doctor, and I also came back from the dead. No, really, I have a PhD in mechanical engineering, and I came very close to dying, and I kind of did die in a very bad motorcycle crash. Now, I lead a wonderful life with a beautiful wife and two kids. I started riding a motorcycle in 2000, and I remember my first bike quite fondly. It was a Yamaha Virago 535. I decided to upgrade my Virago after two primary incidences. One, I was riding along on the interstate, zooming along, minding my own business, when some yahoo on a Harley comes passing me by on the left in my own lane. I was very upset and wanted to catch up to the guy, so I revved the throttle and nothing happened. My bike had such a small engine, I was kind of topped out at 70 miles per hour anyway. The other incident happened when I was riding on a particularly curvy road in West Austin. I was driving up the road, enjoying the curves, going back and forth, when HOLY CRAP! What just happened? Well, the front suspension of my motorcycle had just bottomed out because, well, I was riding too fast on a curvy road on a motorcycle I should not be riding on that road. My second bike was a Suzuki SB650 and it was a big step up in performance. It was what is called a standard, which is also called a naked bike, which is essentially a sport bike without the plastic fairing. It was very fast, roughly as fast as a twin turbo Porsche, below 100 miles an hour that is, and I became highly immersed in the world of high-performance motorcycles. I learned what I consider to be real motorcycle riding. I eventually bought some very expensive motorcycle safety gear, a full leather suit, Gloves with reinforced knuckles, racing and racing boots, 
and a very nice helmet. I had bought all of that gear just in time too, because only a couple of weeks after I purchased it all, I had a very bad, nearly fatal motorcycle crash. In fact, the group I was riding with was about to give me mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation when I started breathing on my own. Shortly after, the paramedics arrived in the care flight helicopter. I was in a coma for about seven weeks, followed by years of therapy. Some common annoyances that I deal with on a day-to-day -day basis are the fact that people often think I am drunk. Now, to be honest, sometimes I am. But the reality is I often am not. For this reason, I, I try not to get drunk in public all that often. I have had my share of run-ins with the police. Luckily, it has never been that bad for me. The cops ask their redundant cop questions, but quickly ascertained that I am indeed disabled, and they let me go. I was not so lucky for a friend of mine with cerebral palsy. He spent a night in jail. When he came before the judge the next morning, he was stumbling, of course, because he has cerebral palsy, but his hands were also pronated because that is what his hands are like. And the judge immediately noticed that he was disabled and dismissed the case. But it does not end there, because several weeks later, the cops came knocking on his door and arrested him again for failing to appear in court, because the judge had so quickly dismissed the case that he had neglected to file the necessary paperwork. As he was leaving, the prosecutor whispered to him, you know you can sue for this, and he says, I know, I'm a lawyer. I typically think of myself as pretty easy to get along with, but there are two things that are good that are gonna put you at a severe disadvantage in your first impression. And that is, if I tell you about my crash, and the first thing you ask me is if I was wearing a helmet, you're really gonna piss me off. It's also gonna get under my skin if I tell you about my crash, and you tell me about how it's a miracle that I'm still alive. If someone was in a motorcycle crash, or maybe they were in a car crash, don't, do not ask them if they were wearing a helmet, or if they were wearing a seatbelt, because that somehow implies that it was their fault. That if they'd only done X, everything would have been fine. 
in my case, I was wearing a helmet. A very good helmet, actually. It's just that I hit my head very hard. And there is no question that I'd be dead if I wasn't wearing a helmet. I've also had people tell me how it is a miracle that I am still alive after such an ordeal. And to that, what I have to say is that is complete bullshit. Giving all the credit to God does not give credit to people like me that make the wise decision to wear a helmet and an appropriate safety gear like leathers and boots and gloves. But it also takes credit away from the other people that deserve so much of the credit, such as the neurosurgeon at the hospital, the nursing staff that helped me and kept my family informed. It also ignores the paramedics and the years of schooling that they went to. It does not give credit to the pilot of the helicopter, not to mention everybody at, say, Bell Helicopters for making such a magic flying machine. It ignores all those people when you see it is a miracle and that God did it. I am going to keep this video short and end it there. But I hope to see you again. Until later, this is Dr. Zombie signing off.